back to WMAC now with your host Chuck Stevenson. Tonight we're coming at you with a full event preview. So we're going to Seoul, South Korea for Road FC 57 Double X All Ladies Fight Card. We're going to have uh, six fights on there, five MMA, one kickboxing, a first for ever for the promotion, having a kickboxing fight. They're all going to be in the Road FC cage. Uh, first up, going to get right into this. So first fight up is going to be at Adam Weight. It's going to be two debutantes, uh, Shin Yu Jin taking on Kim Hae In. Uh, Yu Jin is 15 years old, from what I could gather from Rhodes' website. Hae In is 16 years old. Uh, now, Shin it was selected earlier back in June at the Road FC Open Tryouts for the ladies' fights. Um, I'm guessing that's where they also found Hay and Kim as well. They've both come up, had uh, amateur fights in Road FC's Central League Amateur League. Uh, Shin is 5 feet 1 inches tall, 157 centimeters. And Kim is 5 feet nothing, 155 centimeters. Now, both of these ladies also train with ladies who are Road FC veterans. Shin trains with uh, Hong Yun Ha who fights later on this in the same evening. And Kim trains alongside uh, Ye Lee Ye Ji, who is a multiple-time Road FC veteran and is currently fighting in the Shudo Super Atomweight Tournament. So this should be an interesting fight between two fighters of the same age, same experience level. Uh, looking forward to this. I'm not expecting, you know, greatness out of this fight, but it should be interesting nonetheless. As far as a pick goes, no pick on this one. Uh, next up is going to be a flyweight kickboxing fight between Park Ha Jung and Oh Hyun Ju. Now Park is one and one in MMA, and from according to the Road FC website, she is eight and O in kickboxing. Uh, o is ten and three in kickboxing. Uh, Park stands 5 feet 6 inches, 172 centimeters tall, while O stands 5 feet 3 inches, 163 centimeters tall. So there's going to be a little, little bit of a height advantage for Park. Now Park had fought her last MMA fight upwards of 135 pounds, so she's going to be coming down a little bit in weight. And I believe O flyweight is uh, her normal place in kickboxing. Uh, so both have kickboxing background. Should be an inter interesting fight as well. Again, I've seen, I think, two of Park's MMA fights. None of her kickboxing. I've only seen one kickboxing fight of O. So, again, unfortunately, I, I just don't have it in me to make a pick on this one. Uh, you know what? Screw it. We'll, we'll, we'll make a pick. We'll go with Park to win this uh, due to the height and reach. And so we'll go with Park for this one. Now next up is going to be a minus 49 kilogram catchweight bout between Hong Yoon Ha and Tomomatsu Emi. So Hong is coming in with a 3 and 5 record. Uh, Tomomatsu is 15 and 15. Uh, Hong stands 5 feet 3 inches tall, 160 centimeters to Tomomatsu's 5 feet 1 inch, 156 centimeters. So like a good uh, 1 or 2 inch adva reach advantage or height advantage for Hong. Uh, now, on this, looking at this fight standing, uh, Tomomatsu has some good boxing skills. Uh, she, she goes to, you know, mixes it up both to the head and the body. Uh, whereas Hong, when she's striking, she likes to uh, set up, you know, the big power uh, cross with a with jab and likes to throw big heavy power shots. On the ground, Hong is, you know, very strong. She's pretty yoked. You look at her and she prefers to take her opponent. She does better on the ground, taking her opponents down, out wrestling them, using a jiu-jitsu. Now, uh, Tomomatsu is a brown belt in BJJ to Hong's uh, purple belt. So she is a little higher level on the ground as far as 
you know, belt level goes. And she is definitely the more experienced fighter. Uh, but she tends to wilt under uh, pressure. One thing I noticed when Tomatsu fought Mina Kurobi, uh, she did good in the first round, but then Kurobi started to pour it on and apply the pressure, and Tomamatsu started to wilt a little bit. Uh, one one thing I've noticed, though, about Tomamatsu, her experience has gotten her out of bad spots before. Uh, I watched her fight against Hikaru Aono earlier this year, and she... Uh, she was in trouble pretty much the entire fight. And then one mistake from Aono was all it took for Tomomatsu to uh, take her down and apply, I believe it was a Kimura that she won with. Doo -doo -doo. She defeated Karu Aono with a sleeper choke with like 16 seconds left in the second round. I believe it was a two-round fight. Uh, so it really only takes one mistake for Tomomatsu to take ad advantage. Um, as far as where the fight is most likely to end up, I think it is likely to end up on the ground. I think it'll be home to take Tomomatsu down. As far as my pick goes, it, you know, Tomomatsu, she is... Like, she has a journeyman's record. Of course, she's also lost to a lot of top fighters. But then she's also faded and lost against not-so-good fighters. It's really hard to... to it's really going to come down to which Emi Tomomatsu shows up to the fight. Uh, but I'm going to go with Tomomatsu. I, I, unfortunately, I think Holland's going to take another L here and expand her losing streak to two uh so next up in a minus 60 kilogram catch weight there's several catch weight fights on this bout is going to be rowan pilger taking on nabe yukari or yukari nabe in the west uh pilger is coming in with a three and oh record nabe is seven three and one uh, pilgers of course has perfect record nabe is on a four-fight win streak, including a win over Kyujai Prechimwong uh, just a month ago. Nabe is the older fighter, 32 years to Pilger's 29. Uh, however, Pilger is going to be the taller fighter, 5 feet 5 inches, 164 centimeters, to Nabe's 5 feet 1 inch, 155 centimeters. This this is comes down to, you know, I think this will definitely be a fight that ends up on the ground as well, like more so than the previous fight, even. Um, both are ground fighters. Nabe is a judoka who actually studied judo. She's from Japan, but she studied judoka, judo at a university in Korea. Pilger was, a, I believe, a state champion in Washington. Back in the U.S. And did I believe she did fairly well in the Nationals too. So very strong wrestling background. Um, Pilger, all three of her fights have come in Road FC. Uh, but against nobody with a winning record. However, you look at Nave's record. And it's not so great either. Her best win would be against Yuko Oya last year, who was 9-5 and five at the time. And the rest of her opponents have all been, that she has wins against are like 3-2, three, 3-2, two, three and 1-1, two, one and 4-4. One, four and, four. and then her most recent fight against uh, Kayujai Prachimwong was 0-3. Oh so neither of them are, have been taking on the strongest of opponents. Of course, not Nabe. You'd expect a little bit more by the time you get to seven and three. Uh, Pilger's still three and zero, oh, so they are building her a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to go with Pilger on this. She has shown some very nice wrestling and ground and pound in her fights. Uh, 
and frankly, I think she's going to be the warmest body that, you know, Nabe has fought in her last several fights. Yeah, especially coming off of fighting someone who was uh, 0-3 at the time. And, you know, I think Pilger's going to have to watch out for Nabe's uh, submissions. But I think it'll be Pilger on top, and I haven't seen much of Nabe's uh, bottom game. So I'm going to... I feel actually feel pretty comfortable picking Rowan Pilger to take this fight. Which then takes us to a minus 50 kilogram catchweight fight between Lee Su Yang, 1 and 0, coming in, taking on Shi Ming, who is 6 and 3. Uh, like I said, uh, Lee's coming in 1 and 0 off a successful pro debut last December. Uh, she is coming in off a her a loss to uh, Yuri Shim at that same event, a second round TKO. Before that, she's had uh, two straight wins uh, via first via submission and then the next via rear naked or yeah split decision. Uh, looking at the stats, they're both the same age, 25 years. Looks like Lee has seven months on she. Uh, and then Lee stands at five feet four inches, 162 centimeters tall, to she's five feet three inches, 160 centimeters tall. Uh, Lee trains with, I believe it's the uh, Road FC Abku John Gym. I think they go by Team Korea now, is the name of the pro fight team. Uh, she trains out of, according to Tapology, China Catch Wrestling. Uh, she has a background in Taekwondo. I think that's even what her university degree is in. Uh, Lee is more of an all-round fighter. She can stand and she can wrestle. She can throw into submissions, I guess. Uh, she got she became known in Road FC because she tried out and made their show. It was called Fearless Guys, like a reality show with fighters, and the winners got to make their pro debut. And she was brought in, you know, when Road FC was still trying to break into China better uh, before they had to pull out of their Chinese events for mostly due to political reasons, had nothing to do with uh, Road FC. Anyway, you know, Shi Ming is, you know, the way more experienced fighter, you know, nine fights to one. However, you look at who she's fought and her wins and losses. She has only a single win over a fighter with any MMA experience at all. Pro MMA experience. And that was Shiho Harada who came in with an 0 and 1 record uh, that was last year in August everyone else was debutantes uh, her first loss came in her second fight against someone who was making her pro debut lost a split decision and then her other losses came to Natalia Denisova who was 7 and 3 at the time and then Yuri Shim who was 4 and 2 so uh, she has no real experience winning over anyone, really. At least nobody that has a win. Uh, Lee will be the first, like one of only like three opponents that has a win. Uh, so it's going to be very hard. This is like probably the hardest one to pick. And I'm going to go with uh, Lee Su Young because just the way Shi Ming's record is. Now, Shi Ming is fun to watch. She's very aggressive. She comes forward from the start. Um, and I think Lee Su Young is going to be able to use that to her advantage. And like I said, she trains with a very good team, and they seem to have trained her very well. She, coming off that win over uh, Lee Ye Ji, who was 3-4 and four at the time, so coming off a win over a much more experienced opponent. Now, granted, she was training with someone that used to train with Lee. So, they trained her specifically to beat her. 
it'll be interesting to see how they've prepared her to take on Shi Ming. But I'm going to go with Lee Su Yan to win. Which brings us to our main event. Uh, much anticipated fight in the Korean MMA scene. Uh, it'll be at atom weight between uh, Park Jong Un and Shim Yuri. Park coming in six six and one. Shim coming in five and two. Park coming in on two straight wins after losing multiple straight fights. Uh, last December she challenged uh, Ham Sahi to for the title in Road FC and made it all the way to the end. Lost the decision. Uh, so credit to her for that. Shim is coming off of three straight wins, including uh, the TKO over Shi Ming last December. Uh, looking at the stats, Shim is the older fighter, 25 years to 23. For Park, uh, Shim is going to have a decided height advantage, 5 feet 6 inches, 168 centimeters tall, to Park's 5 feet 2 inches, 158 centimeters. And I would imagine, I don't have reach stats for either of them, but I would imagine that the, it extends to the reach as well. Now, Park is a, a kickboxer, and uh, the gym she trains out of also does Sambo, kickboxing and Sambo. Shim trains out of Team Genius, which is a Muay Thai gym, and she was uh, a member of the National Muay Thai team. Now, I did do a full preview of this fight. I've done, I've done two of them, actually, because this fight was originally scheduled to happen back in June, and Shim got injured, had to pull out, so now they've rescheduled it. Uh, one thing, uh, the big thing to notice is that Park is actually more of an outfighter, and Shim loves to get to the clinch. So this fight really depends on, on the striking side it really depends on where most of the fight takes place if park can stick and move then she'll have a decided advantage in the striking but if she gets caught in shim's clinch she's gonna it's gonna be a very long night now as far as the ground game goes it really depends on who gets the takedown neither of them are very good off their back neither of them have the best takedown defense uh, one thing park has shown in recent fights is that if she's losing in the striking game even just starts to lose the striking game she won't hesitate to take her opponent down. And Shim has shown a willingness to take her opponent down too because both of them know that they're weak off their back. So um, if you get a chance, please go watch the full preview for this. I'm picking uh, Shim Yu Ri to win. I think her star is on the rise, whereas Park is kind of plateaued at this point. Now she has picked up two wins this year. So she evened out a record. Uh, Shim had that two loss, started off 2-0 and and then took those two losses. But then she's been on a, that three-fight win streak ever since. Hopefully, uh, she's gotten over that injury that she suffered back in like May or June. And she'll be able to come back. I'm picking Shim Yuri to win this main event. And this fight has major title implications because... Uh, Ham Sahi is the atom weight champ in Road FC. She's been taking a year off. She's been fighting in Ryzen, and she'll fight on Ryzen New Year's Eve. I think win or lose there, she'll come back to Road FC. Now, if Shim wins this, she's definitely getting a title shot. If Park wins this, she might not get an immediate shot. She might need one more win after that, but I could definitely see a rematch happening with Ham down the road. And that, that was a fun fight to watch. Uh, Park was the is the only one of Ham's opponents to not get finished, to go make it all the way to the decision. So, so ever since Ham went back down to atom weight. So no matter who wins, this fight has heavy implications in the Road FC atom weight division. Okay, so guys, so that was all of the fights for Road FC 57 double X. At this time, I don't know if I'll be able to do a fight companion for this. I tried last year and it didn't work out, so then I had to go back and do it 
<laughs> over again because of uh, technical difficulties at the time. I'm going to try to do one again this year for this one, but we'll send it as a uh, tentative. It depends on, you know, what time it starts and how long it goes and if I have to go to work or not. Try to get the day off for that or at least an hour or two off. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments down below. Likes are always appreciated and of course, and hey, what are you waiting for? If you haven't yet, subscribe to WMAC Now, the best, fastest growing women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time.